Just a few years out of Juilliard, Finn Whitrock made a splash when he joined stars like Philip Seymour Hoffman and Andrew Garfield in the Broadway revival of Death of a Salesman, winning awards for his performance as Happy. Now he's taken on another starry revival of a classic, Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie, but this time he's one of the headliners. Find out about his childhood on the stage. We were just like normal okay. kids, yeah. just happened to just like happened to want doing... to do Henry V. Right. Like it was just, we were just weirdos. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I love that. Theater yeah. weirdos. How it felt to get bloody as one of TV's biggest serial killers, and so much more on this week's Show People. <music> Finn Whitrock, good Hello. to see you. Good to see you. I've been you. waiting to have you here for a while. I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good. Well, I'm glad it worked out. I was just waiting for you to come back to Broadway. I was like, come on, come on, come on, man. It finally happened. Yeah. <laughs> and you are in a beautiful production of The Glass Menagerie. I really, really love this production. Sam Gold directed it. Yes, he did. Um, and it is really different. I mean, you yeah. know, lot, when they announced it, a lot of people said, wait a minute, we just had The Glass Menagerie on Broadway yeah. with Cherry Jones. That, that one was good. Wasn't it like the other Yeah, why are you day? doing Glass Menagerie? I mean, I personally think they should just do it every year with different, <laughs> different yeah. talented people. <laughs> yeah, just bring in some new Amandas every year. Yeah, yeah why not? I just, just line up the Amandas. <laughs> And the gentleman callers, you are the gentleman yes. caller. This is, a, this is actually a very iconic role. I mean, every role in Glass Menagerie. It's only four, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you knew that, you actually knew this, this role and this show, and you've, you've had this sort of like on your list, right? Definitely. I actually did it in first year of acting school. At like Juilliard? The, yeah, at Juilliard, yeah. Although in acting school, we never got past like our fifth line because, because they know, would just we'd stop and, you and know, <laughs> critique and start again and <laughs> talk about it and stop and, you know. <laughs> That's about that's about the pace of right. first year acting. Right. But, uh, I think that kind of wet my appetite for it. Yeah. And it just worked out this way. Yeah. So the nice thing about actually doing it on Broadway is that nobody stops you. You just get to like plow. Yeah. Through, yeah. You just get to plow through the scene. Yeah. Sometimes you wish Richard Feldman was there to be like, <laughs> uh, can I go back? Um, yeah. No. It's been a it's been a real dream, honestly. Yeah. And it's very stripped down. The minute you sit in the theater, you know you're in for something special. Yeah. And you guys all enter through the house, and and yeah. it sort of immediately takes audiences, right? Like we're not doing we're not doing Grandma's Glass Menagerie. We're doing yeah. A new it's not one. your grandfather's Glass Menagerie. Yeah. I think Sam. Gold really, he's he likes to um, disrupt you a little, disrupt yeah. your expectations, and even if that makes you a little uncomfortable at times, I think it actually kind of jerks people awake yeah. in a way, like especially the way we start. And the, I won't give too much away, but like the the lighting has its a special yep. kind of very slow um, kind of mm -hmm. fade in yeah. to it, what's happening. Yeah, um, and I think it's almost works on people kind of unconsciously because they uh -huh. might start being like, "What is this? There's where's the set? Uh, why are the house lights on?" And right. then it. Um, I think it slowly kind of beguiles you, and uh -huh. by till by the end, it does feel like we've won them over most of the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Knock on metal. <laughs> yeah. There's this uh, woman named Sally Field. Yeah, uh, she's, uh, yeah she's, she's done a few things. She's pretty amazing. You might hear about her. What was it like meeting her? I mean, when did you first meet her? When you worked on this, or did you know her over the past? Or? I didn't. Um, it's funny. I had, I had met her very quickly in after Death of a Salesman, but then, I, but then um, we had like a workshop of Menagerie this last July. Mm -hmm. Scott Rudin's very good about, he, it's like a thing that we're, he's done with a lot of shows, it's like having like a two or three week rehearsal process. Yeah. You go away for a bunch of months, then you come back in January and um, it's like, it's in you in a kind of deeper way. So we had that experience first and she was just, from the beginning, like the most awesome, down to earth, everything you want Sally right. Field to be, she right. really was. So after you do the workshop version last year, then is there like a Glass Menagerie group chat and you're like, well, <laughs> yeah. you all like texting each other? Email chain. Uh, <laughs> we stayed in loose touch, but it's kind of nice like you have this intense process three weeks and then you just kind of go away and don't think about it. Uh -huh. People did like work on their lines a bit and then you kind of come back and it feels like you, you, you're starting not from scratch, mm -hmm. you know? It's like um, starting week four of rehearsal, but it's just you've had right. like a bunch of months to sort of let it sit in you. Right. Let's talk about Madison Ferris. So you, you do a lot of your scenes with Madison. She plays Laura. Yeah. Broadway debut. She's yeah. fabulous. But I didn't know until I walked into the theater that she had muscular dystrophy. I had no, yeah. I had no idea. That was sort of like kept quiet. Yeah. Um, it's obviously a huge element in, in the production. Yeah. What was it like working with her? And, and first of all, just having her be so fresh and new and sort of new to Broadway and new to all that. I'm sure she was like just freaking out that she. Her eyes were very wide. Yeah, yeah got walking the into that theater the first it. time. Yeah, um, which was kind of it was great for all of us too. It, not, not that I'm like an old yeah, saw at this, right. but uh, I remember you know 
I remembered like the first time I walked into a Broadway theater being like, this is where I'm going to do this. And yeah. I remember I actually cried and she like weeped. Like, f- we, like we walked in after a rehearsal one day, it just was empty, totally empty space. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, this, she was just like crying and we all were <laughs> like crying. It was wow. like this family bonding moment. Oh, that's beautiful. She's so brave and she's so eager to work. And um, I think it, at first we were all like, how is this going to work? Yeah. And she kind of, because she's so kind of poised and sure of herself, mm-hmm. kind of very quickly put us all at ease. Mm-hmm. And it is, you know, it's an, I think it adds a really interesting element to the show. And, yeah. and if you think about this girl in ni- the 1930s, you know, right. a tenement where you have to walk up the fire escape to get there, what that would mean, that like the, the living with that right. every day would make life hard, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of what she, her challenges become a, kind of more clear and the stakes become higher that way. Mm-hmm. You know. Obviously you're going in knowing you did it in school, they kept stopping you, but <laughs> now you're actually doing it. What was the like development of it like and, and really digging into it? I, I think one of the first things we said about it was that we all have, we all feel under the shadow of this play in some way yeah. and kind of having to like right. break out through the cobwebs yeah. of the shows you've seen before, your kind of preconceptions, uh, right. all the the baggage on it and kind of like treat it new and find your own way through it. Mm-hmm. I think Sam really pushed Madison to have, to find Laura's agency was the word he kept mm-hmm. saying, like to find her own poise and that this thing that we people say about her being shy is maybe more a projection of what, of other people onto her, not necessarily something in her own yeah. character. And so I think Sam likes to kind of add a, a complication to something mm. that it might seem like the opposite of what's written, but is actually just a kind of deeper level. Like it makes things three dimensional in mm-hmm. a way that you can fall into stereotypes at times. And right. I think you're trying to break through that. So Mr. Joe Mantello is also oh, in the, in the yeah, show. He's guy. a very famous director. I don't know if you he's knew that. A <laughs> yeah. he, he's a good actor, but he's also a very famous director. It's like he's directed every play. Yeah. And besides this one. And like Wicked. <laughs> yeah. Directed <laughs> like Wicked. Thing, yeah, yeah. You know, things like that. He was like, Sally, if you ever want to go to Wicked, you know, I'll just throw <laughs> you in there. You have a Wicked hookup now. Yeah, I got a yeah. hookup. Yeah, for life. <laughs> like a Wicked card. Have you ever auditioned for him as a director? <laughs> you know, I never have. He never cast you? What the hell, Joe? What the hell, Joe? <laughs> I'm about ready. Yeah. I've done like reading a reading with him okay. before. But no, no, he never he never gave me a job. Right, and he's not passing out like notes, like direct, he's not fighting <laughs> with Sam over directorial notes. And no. <laughs> he's able I to just sort of go into actor mode. It's yeah. funny, I just saw The New Angels in America. In London, Andrew Garfield, your former co-star. Right, yeah. I, was, I have so many memories of Joe Mantello in Angels in America. Did I know. you see him? Did I didn't you, see did you that, see, no. But did you ever see him act before? I saw The Normal Heart. Of course, Normal Heart, right. And uh, and then I was in and the movie a bit, yeah. and he plays the other guy, and he's yeah. also amazing in it. Yeah. It's kind of such a, like a rare treat to see him act. Yeah. Because uh, he does it so well, but it's kind of nice that he does it rarely, because right. like, it becomes a kind of, yeah, it's oh, a special Joe Mantello's thing. in this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now that you're back on Broadway, do you live? Are you living the life of a Broadway star at all? Oh yeah, like going out at night, you're like always. Do it? What's the what's the what's the deal? Bar Central and a little you, bit, yeah. It's a little Sardis sometimes, Sardis like old moments. old school yeah. stuff. Um, this because there's only four of us in this cast. We have like it seems like we have endless real estate backstage <laughs> in this Broadway theater. So right. the, our dressing rooms have become a cool hangout spot. So there's a lot of this like extra space. Yeah, I have like an overflow room. (laughs) I have a room for my guests, and then there's like an like just another room that Joe has kind of made to look really nice. Oh, nice. We just like if there's too many people, we just throw them in there. (laughs) Joe's like decked out his dressing room to be like the coolest bar you've ever been to. Okay. Um, What about you? I've tried to. I've tried to. To go to Home Goods. (laughs) Yeah. Do a little CB2 shopping. (laughs) CB2. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) My wife Sarah was very good about uh, trying to make my. So spot. Sarah came back and yeah, tried she, to make and it was it like, look no, 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 presentable. Yeah, yeah. We need a rug here. We need to hang some things. What's the vibe? Um, you know, it's it's uh, cool, relaxed, but a little dorky. I'd say, okay. like me. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we have to take a quick break, but we're going to travel back to uh, Lenox, Massachusetts. Oh boy! We'll talk about That's that exciting. dorky guy when we come back. <laughs> We're back with Peter Finn Whitrock. That's your oh, actual, right? Oh, doing your research. Yeah, I did my research. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you're, and your dad's Peter. Peter. Right. Wh- but senior. Whitrock. Right. Yes. You, so you were Peter it's Junior? A, it's a complicated story. Oh, is it? Well, not really. <laughs> my mom was like, 
I want to name him Finn. And my dad's like, that's weird. Which is an awesome name, by the way. Thank you. I have a friend whose son is named Finn, and I think it's, it's like one of my favorite names. Thank you. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but my dad just sort of was like, well, I think we should give him my name in case he hates the name Finn. Okay, so it was and like so a safety. Be, yeah, it was a safety. Right. But, it, but it, I think Finn Peter sounded weird, so they just named me Peter Finn. Right. Crowley Whitrock, actually. My mom kept her maiden name and put, stuck that in there, too. So oh. I've got a big, f- fat four name name. And were you, when you were a kid, were you immediately into the name Finn, or were you kind of embarrassed of it or not? Into I it? was. I never went through the embarrassment f- Right. You're just like, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I accepted it. So yeah. your dad is an actor. Yes. And you saw him act a lot. Yes, as were, a kid. I'm assuming it kind of rubbed off on you a little <laughs> bit. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so d- does that mean that like he offers unsolicited acting advice <laughs> yeah. to things? Well, or did you use him when you were, like, did you go to him and be like, I'm auditioning, for, like, did you go for, for sure. advice he, from him? And he would help me with auditions. He helped me, like, uh, when I went to like, an arts high school, he, like, helped me with the monologues, the Juilliard ones. Uh-huh. Uh, he was, like, my, it was, like, for a while, it was, like, biggest fan, biggest critic, you know, the same okay. thing at once. Uh-huh. Um, and I always, when he was in the audience, I was always, like, little nervous. Yeah. But he's really good. He gives really good feedback, like the kinds that actors can use. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, yeah, he's always been he's always been sort of my mentor that right. way. Did um, you remember any like iconic things you saw him do that you were like, oh my God, Dad, that was so good? He did um, As You Like It at Chase Burn Company with Karen Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. It was like just before the Indiana Jones days. Right, yeah. Uh, I was very young then, but I do, it's like you have like, Images that stick in your uh-huh. mind about it. Were you in it? I wasn't in that. Okay, but eventually you were up I on was stage. Yeah, like he was in The Merchant of Venice, and I was like Leonardo, the page boy. So right. I was like, I will shall deliver the letters, to, sir. Yes, yes, you know, yeah, le- great part of Leonardo. Yeah. But it was a great, it was just a great way to grow up, and it was more like I think, like what I try to tell like young actors yeah. when they ask me like. Well, Advice. It's just like they all do. go Everybody see stuff. Everybody wants to know, right? How do I? How do I do this? Yeah. Right. And it's like see stuff. You know, like mm. I would like listen. I would like watch the play every night. I would like do my little part, and then I would like go backstage and like watch it and listen to it, and um, seeing how it changes night to night, and seeing how actors do stuff. Like it works on you in a kind of osmosis, just to like be there and suck it up. Just be like, yeah. a, be a sponge. You know. Yeah. But I also, what I read was that it was also just an easy way to babysit you. Totally, to yeah. To just throw you in the show. Yeah, it was at this, uh, the, the mount was like Edith Wharton's old beautiful estate, and that's where wow. the company was wow. um, in Lenox. And yeah, it was sort of like free-for-all. You just sort of drop the kids off, let them wander in the woods, right. be in the show at night, and like don't the have ver- to worry the about them. The very young company. Yes, the very young you company. you called yourselves, you and the other kids, right? That's where we all began, where it all began, yeah. Yeah, Very awesome. young company. Awesome. And we, the, yeah. Those, have those friendships, are those like important friendships? Yeah. From the ages like eight till we were like 15, every summer we'd, I'd come back and we'd like work on scenes. We'd right. like just pick out scenes from Shakespeare, we'd put them up and we'd like do them for the company. It makes your childhood sound very like highbrow and kind of fancy. It sounds like that, but so it, what were you it's into hard to explain because it wasn't, wasn't at all. It was just... But what were you doing and what were you into that wasn't like classic theater and um, every th- I mean like what Nirvana TV shows were you I mean into? Oh, uh, oh Nirvana okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like every like we were just like normal okay. kids yeah. just happened to just like happened to want to do Henry V right like it was just it was just weirdos yeah yeah, yeah. I love that theater yeah. weirdos yeah and then you ended up in LA your parents moved to California and yeah were you when, when I was happened? like twelve okay and it sounds like you were you started auditioning like yeah right I mean you started I like did like theater in LA a bit when I was young, like a teenager, and then at end of high school I started like really auditioning. And, uh-huh. um, have you ever done a musical? N- for everyone's sake, no I haven't. There's no, there's no not, secret. Not a s- I mean, singing I part anyway in a, in a musical. There's yeah. no secret like <laughs> Bye Bye Birdie in <laughs> your If he is, it's very secret because I haven't found him yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super secret maybe. <laughs> yeah. When you were in LA, so obviously you were sort of exposed to a lot of opportunities to maybe like, like be in like TV shows. And yeah. And you got started getting like TV work and... Yeah, a little bit of TV work. Right. I did like pilot of Cold Case. Cold Case. And, like, was a good, that was a good show. Yeah, it was a good show, I love Cold it? Case Murders. Yeah, so I know. It was great. Show. Yeah, I was into uh, that. It was awesome. And this show, uh, Halloween Town High, the right. great oh, Disney I know Channel all about, musical. Right. Aren't you Cody yeah. or something? <laughs> yes. Hey, wow, you have yeah. done your research. Yeah. Right. yeah. Halloween yeah. Town High. With Debbie huge. Reynolds was great. Yeah. I know Debbie. Yeah, yeah I know. It was did, awesome. did, you, did you did you actually get to do scenes with Debbie yeah, Reynolds? Yeah, we had a, like we had a couple little scenes at the end, and uh, she was really sweet to me. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was like really cool. And and uh, Judith Hogue, who 
when at that time I thought it was awesome because she was April O'Neil in the Ninja Turtles movies. I had like a childhood crush on her and then she was in it too. I was like, this, this is cool, yeah. This is what it's like to be right. Hollywood, yeah. So what I found out about you and Juilliard is that you actually like you had a little bit of a journalism. Uh, yeah. You won like a journalism award. Oh, that's right, right. Yeah. yeah. You won an award. I wrote, I wrote for the Juilliard Journal like I would just I know, not, I read not some reviews, of your pieces. but I would do like about the about the fourth year play or whatever. Yeah, I read them. People. I read some of your oh, you pieces. Did? Yeah, there's some pieces. I on loved one. it. I, yeah, I, I Peter Finn wrote them. Yeah, yeah, that's my my pen name. Yeah. Yes. Did you interview Broadway actors and like? What were you doing? I was interview. It was it was I was it was about plays that were at school. Okay, yeah. But like I, uh, like and people came to speak to the classes and you would write about. Yeah. yeah. What, who was there and like Edward Albee talked to us right. for a while and did a thing about him and you don't realize how lucky you were till you get out, you know. So as an yeah. award winning journalist, do you have yes, any, thank you. Yes. Do you have any tips for me <laughs> about? Yeah, you're interview? doing okay. I'll give you some notes. Okay, I can email yeah. you some notes you later. You keep them off camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll keep I'm, it off I'm a little intimidated. Yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah, intimidated let's, to be. Let's keep the secret, you know, behind <laughs> the camera. <Yeah. laughs> so did you thrive at Juilliard? Did you act a lot while you were there? And were you, was it ne competitive? And never stopped. You know, yeah. our class wasn't too competitive. A little, there was, there was that, that stuff definitely happened. Different classes had different dynamics. Yeah. But you're with the same 20 people. Right. Now it's only 18. Uh, like, all day, every day for four years. Right. So you get to know people real well. Um, and you're always working on a show. Um, I was back there and I was like looking at the schedule and it was like, yeah, from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. It was just like, wow. Da, 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 da. And it's just so immersive that way. Um, but we had a great, we had a really tight class and um, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. I mean, you really started getting work, right? You were oh, here, thanks. you were in New York and you yeah. were like, we're doing this. Doing yeah. Some auditioning. I was in New York. But I, because I lived in LA, it was easy to like, go back for pilot season, right. sort of stay with my mom. Like, yeah, you know, I, I had I had also enough, a little bit of, like enough time not working and doing waiting tables that I learned what that was Did too. Did you, which was, I think was, was a important. struggling time? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's important to have that actually looking back. I'm like, I'm thankful that I know what it was. I mean, it's, it would sound stupid, but like, right. it's important to appreciate the yeah. work that you get. Of course. You know? Where'd you yeah. wait tables? Um, this place, Fred's on, uh, 80. I know Fred's. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Six, yes, Fred's. I used to go to Fred's all the time. Wait a minute. With the dogs on the wall? Yeah, I know Fred's. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, I, I waited tables there probably. And we, we, I graduated like at, during the financial crisis, so it's not a good time. Like, there were not many artistic jobs to be gotten. So it was like 2009 around then. Okay. Auditioning. You might have waited I've, I'm my table. sure I did. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I used to go to Fred's. I, was, I don't know if I was the best waiter, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were you not good at it? Did you? Or were you I think I was okay. I mean, were they all actors? Was, everyone there? Yeah, like lots of them were like musical theater people. Right, of course. Yeah. Which you are not one of. Unless Struggling. we find that tape. Unless yeah, yeah, that tape yeah. That You'll never find it. <laughs> 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 and then Michael Mayer gave you a good opportunity, right? Yes, uh, yeah. the the illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sort of a bit Tony Kushner's. That was definitely like a, a turning point. Yeah, in my you, Ben Brantley reviewed you. He did. Remember what he said about you? Oh, I, I, I do remember. It's what, one of the last times I read a review, even though he was very nice Can to I me. tell you? Surreally, Sur surreally handsome <laughs> and appropriately theatrical. <laughs> I've never known what that part meant, but I think it's a good thing. <laughs> appropriately theatrical. <laughs> I think you are appropriately theatrical. Appro I know. <laughs> surreally handsome and appropriately theatrical. Hey, I mean, it worked. I'll, I'll never, it'll never get better than that. Uh, yeah. It'll never get better than that. <laughs> uh, and it got you to Broadway, maybe. Maybe it, it kind of helped. Uh, well, I did. Mike Nichols came and saw that right, play. So yeah. it really, that play really is kind of like if I, yeah, because you know, you look at your career, it's like it becomes this kind of domino reaction of like, I got that because I'm not that, and you know, you can kind of trace things back, and yeah. that I can really trace back a lot of things to that because Mike saw that he's like a Tony Kushner fan, right. obviously, yeah. Angels in America, yeah, yeah. So he sort of sees everything he does, and um, and then a few months later, it was like I was actually living in LA at the time, and they were like, Mike Nichols really wants to see you to play Happy for Death of a Salesman. And I flew out there and I like, auditioned. I mean, like, auditioned with, like, it was a big audition. It wasn't like I was offered the part at all. It was a cattle call? It was, it was pretty big. It was <laughs> yeah. like, I remember being like, oh, there's a lot of dudes here. Uh huh. But then it was like one of those like life changing days where it was just right. like, I did the audition. Mike's like, can you come back and read for Scott Rudin in two hours? And I was like, I, I think I can fit that in. Right. And then, uh, yeah. And then I sort of had the part later that day. I got the call. It was like one of those like, Oh, my life's different completely. My life yeah. just changed. Yeah. Uh, let's take a commercial break, and then yeah. we're going to talk about your new life after after that. Ha Ooh. Happy. Your happy How exciting. life. Exciting. We'll be right back yeah. with Finn Whitrock.
and we're back with Finn Whitrock. So yeah, Broadway, I remember you were fantastic. Oh, thank and, you. Yeah, you won like a Derwent Award and the Theater World Award. It's like a big, that was like a big, nice big Broadway moment. And you were it the least cool. famous person in, this, in the show. I was the least <laughs> famous person, yeah. I mean, by a long shot, yeah. I mean, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. I mean, amazing that you got to have an experience with him. It was like such a huge event. It was a big event. Were you terrified? Yeah. At the, at I mean, you knew everyone the in the world was coming to see this. Yeah, <laughs> and they did. Like every day backstage was like another like red carpet worthy event. You know, who, who like made you lose your mind? Like, uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Wow, I, it was cool. <sighs> a lot, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Rebecca Miller, who he's yeah. married to, is Arthur Miller's daughter. Right. And I, I think she's she's can be a tough critic about her father's work, and yeah. she really liked it. And so, I remember the two of them coming backstage and that being a very right. intense moment. I don't know what it was. Kind of a blur now, yeah. you know. And what yeah. was. Philip Seymour Hoffman liked to work with. I mean, I'm sure everybody asks you that. Yeah. Uh, it was a huge loss to the acting world when yeah. he died. Was he kind of what you expected he would be like, or were you surprised by anything? Or I probably was very intimidated at first, and he did have kind of a quietness about him yeah. that um, made you feel like, at first, like, I don't know if he likes me, or if I don't know yeah. if we can talk. And then, it like, once you kind of just got past that, it was like he was so full of love and so, so incredibly uh, devoted to his work. Mm. It was like a very contagious feeling that he was like, every day on stage was like, he was putting every ounce of himself there. And he kind of, just do, just in doing that kind of makes everyone show up in that kind yeah. of full way. Um, and it really did, like the show would like wear and tear on him very brutally. He kind of put himself through that. Wow. Um, and it sort of had us all do that. Um, kind of by, just by example, leading by example, you know. Um, but we also did become pretty close. Like the fam like four of us would like go out almost every show afterwards mm -hmm. and kind of, even like, f even if it was like a quick meal, just to kind of like reconnect and mm -hmm. talk about it. And uh, and after the show, he'd be really funny and joking. Okay. And like, like but it was really the wanting to- At the theater, it was, he was really before, long. Yeah, he was, right. he was in it. Yeah, he, there was no talking to f Phil beforehand. Wow. And he would, he had this like, sort of great neurotic thing where he did not want to see anyone after the show. He would like put his like street clothes on under, like, s some some aspect of, of it under his wow. costume so that he could just like strip it off and go out. He would like be leaving oh, like with the audience? as the audience was leaving. With, the, with like a hat know. with the audience? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. He wouldn't even know he was there. Huh. Four people like trying to get his autograph so after basically were like, he's yeah, everyone at the stage door was basically like asking across. you, yeah, he, when's yeah, Philip exactly. Seymour Hoffman coming yeah, out? Yeah. Like, Dude, he's gone. Guys, it's over. He's yeah, waiting he's, for us at the home. bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was, literally, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see him in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. But it was, it was a definitely a uh, life-changing thing. And artistically, too, just really, as an actor, I really felt, when I was done with that show, like I had really kind of explored new territory mm. that I hadn't. And I loved you also in Sweetbird of Youth. I got to see you do that with Diane Lane. At the you Goodman. did? Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, oh my God, yeah, it was wonderful. That's that a weird play. It's a weird but, play. But like act one, it's like three acts and every act is like. It's so like imbalanced. So it's, like yeah. it's like a two person play for the first yeah. two acts. Yes. And then suddenly there's like 30 <laughs> people like, on stage. People? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Smorgasbord. Yeah. Um, yeah, Diane was amazing. Debbie Cromer, the director, uh -huh. was great. Yeah. That was a kind of emotionally very challenging play because yeah. he kind of, Chance Wayne, he really yeah, and puts them through the ringer in that. You're really checking off the classics, though. Like, I mean, do you want to do like something just new and wild, like a, a, like a new play? And I do want to do a new play. Yeah, and obviously yeah. you just did Othello to downtown. Yes. Yeah. So you I know. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, it just happens that way. Yeah. I, I I guess I do pick it out because I do love, I love great language. Uh -huh. you know, that's really what I am right. drawn to. Um, but there are new plays with great language, so I, I'm game for all of that. Well, you were in um, American Horror, Horror Story yeah. Freak Show, Two which I loved. Theater. Thank you. Uh, awesome, awesome season. I, I love that. That's actually my favorite season. I know it's yeah. very, very controversial for like and fans yeah. of that show to like fight about their favorite yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, it's a big But deal. that season was amazing. A lot of it had to do with you. And it's funny, oh, Sarah Paulson was here. Oh. Before that, I was. I always said Lana Banana is like my favorite it's American great. Horror Story character. And then, I don't know, Dandy Mott, he was, he was pretty it's memorable. Close second. You oh, played good. like a crazy yeah. serial killer. Yeah. You killed like, m like 20 something people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like it was nuts. Uh, fighting a serial killer on the brink of discovering his serial killer potential. So right. it was fun because it, uh, we didn't really know where it was going. Right. Like the show, like a actually as written, it was not supposed to quite be as 
as big of an arc as it was. It was supposed ah. to be like four episodes okay. or something. Just this kind of crazy side story. Right. But then I think Ryan got really into it. I got really into it, and all, all the writers were like, "This, there's something cool here," and kind of like kept it going. And so yeah, so you yeah, the body count got really large. Oh by my the god, end. That's crazy. And then, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess he's still in that tank. I guess I don't. I don't know what. Yeah. Well, Andy. I think he's I, I can't really do a done spinoff. For I know. Uh, last season, I didn't even know it was you. Mm -hmm. You were that, you were like some crazy white trash guy. The makeup in that was. I was like, really? who's that? Yeah. And you were also great in Hotel. I oh love yeah. That, like that whole like Rudolph Valentino Oof. thing. That was cool. Oh yeah. Thanks. That was so cool. I mean, you played multiple characters, but that was like a cool. Um, that was like a cool twist. Like yeah. Old Hollywood twist. Just watch it. You yeah, just watch it. You'll get it. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's Do you feel like very there, there will be more uh, Ryan Murphy collaborations? I hope so. Does he yeah. Like, does he like say like I'm writing some crazy thing? It might be good for you. I have a he feud. does. I have a feud you can act out. Yeah. You can do a that, 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 Those those will just like happen. Like he'll just you'll just get a call and just be like I have a crazy idea. You want to do it? Maybe you can play Prince Charles and Charles and Diana feud. Yeah. I don't know. There's a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. Just put, in, put just putting it out there. I don't know. Yeah. I Hear that, I, Ryan? I yeah. just like the idea of you, of you doing more stuff with him because he's so yeah. talented. I hope to be doing more. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about something not crazy like Dandy Mott. Let's talk about, um, I heard a really sweet story I want you to tell us about your beautiful wife, Sarah. And you've been married, what, a little over two years? Two years, yeah. yep. Tell me about the proposal because you, I, I, is Oh, it, wow. Where did you hear about it's it? It's very sweet. It's oh, a yeah. sweet little story. Uh. <laughs> You're clearly a very romantic guy. Oh, no, like I have my Ma. moments. No, uh, <laughs> Dandy was romantic too. Um, Truth in his way. Uh, <laughs> we were we were pa we were living in Highland Park in L.A. Our life our life has just been like a constant. Which coast were we on at that time? And how long? When did you meet? We met we met at school. Right. Like in freshman year. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And was it's it been an immediate, a lot of was years? It an immediate like connection? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We were actually set up on a on a fake double date, where two meaning that the other two weren't really they the, were the, pretending. I, w I put a uh, I, I drew a name out of a hat. There was Victoria or Sarah, and I was gonna go on. I was gonna be on date the one that of that I picked out, you know. And my friend was gonna date the other one. That's yeah. how you. That's how you. But rolled? it turns out that that's how you rolled back then. I don't know. It was some crazy freshman idea we had. <laughs> we're like, oh, we're just gonna have, have fun and uh, it'll just be funny. Uh -huh. And it turns out that they were both. Named Sarah in the hat. Oh, they were okay. just basically setting me up with Sarah. Oh, and, uh, oh that's sweet. It, yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah. The <laughs> proposal though, we were living in Highland Park. Um, our our apartment was full of boxes. It was like all right. boxed up. And she was uh, she was visiting a friend who had a baby, and then she was going to go to yoga. Mm -hmm. And I convinced her friends to drop her off at home before going to yoga. Okay. In the meantime, I had put roses on all of the boxes That's so sweet. and I had dressed up in a in a tuxedo and she she walked in the door. Was she wearing like yoga pants? She was wearing yoga pants. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a wonderful picture of like I'm in a tux and she's in yoga and I felt like flowers on all the steps going up and she's like, What's happening? And then I uh, <laughs> and then I was like she will open the door. I was like down on one knee. Oh like, wow. Yeah. That's super romantic. It was cool. And she said no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then she walked out the door. <laughs> I gotta go to yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out. Are we done with this yet? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was good. You feel like settled now about your career? I mean, you have a lot of opportunities coming your way, or does that, or is it never, do you never <sighs> really feel settled as an actor? I, I mean, you're not up at maybe Fred's waiting, bringing me <laughs> the chicken. That's true. You're, you're no, I, <laughs> I'm very thankful for, for having steady work yeah. and for having a job at all. Yeah. I st but um, the old instincts are tough to kick. Right. Like. I don't know what's next, and immediately, mm -hmm. now that it's like three months out, I'm already getting the old anxiety about like, am I gonna have a job? Am I gonna w be working? Right. Although there's a part of your brain that knows that that's kind of ridiculous, but still you can't help but like, go back to your old, right. your old fighting actor instincts. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what, what's next? Well, that's you know? probably good. Yeah. The hunger, and you don't wanna get the too hunger. settled. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I don't wanna get complacent. And you know, if you if you're ever like hard up, and you are an award-winning journalist, I know. So yes. If you ever want to write about Broadway, I for just Broadway. might. Com, just let me know. I might be calling you for a job. <laughs> yeah, come July. <laughs> How long is uh, Glass Menagerie running? Till July second. Okay, July second. So then you we're get just July about 4th. halfway through. Right, and then Fourth of July, you get to. Woo! Woo! Party! <laughs> yeah, can't wait. You are fantastic in the show. I'm so Thank happy you. you came on. I'm so excited to see what you do next. And Thank you. Theater and too. film and TV, everything. Maybe yeah. musicals. 
Uh, probably not. Don't rule it out, but don't <laughs> count on it. <laughs> don't hold your breath. <laughs> so everyone, you need to check out The Glass Menagerie, starring Sally Field, John Mantello, Finn Whitrock, and Madison Ferris. Thanks again. So Th good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. See you next time.